Hi, everybody. Javi asked about my process for developing uh, some theme music for Nicole. So I just want to briefly kind of talk about how I did this and I did it pretty quickly. So um, this is the music environment that I work in a lot of times just for fun. It's called Renoise. Uh, you can find out more about it at renoise.com, R-E-N-O-I-S-E.com. Um, but it's a it's a very uh, very reasonably priced uh, tool that kind of mimics the old style way of making music. Uh, that you know before computers had very high end graphics, the interface itself was made of mostly text. And the way it works here is that um, I have my project laid out so that I have my melodic instruments here and then drums are over here, and each thing gets its own track. So this is one track. And what I did is I opened up a, uh, what's called a, an audio plugin or a VST plugin. This one's called Studio Player. And um, this is just a big collection of very nice high quality sounds. And I just turned it on and found a sound I liked. Uh, turned on the smart chords, put in some kind of interesting jazzy chords, and then turned on the multi-layer arpeggiator. And what this does is actually generate kind of musical patterns uh, that, uh, that can kind of repeat in interesting ways. And so I started with just this track where I just put in three notes, a low, low A note, a higher A note, and then an E, which is a complementary, it's a, it's a, it's a fifth note. And I just sort of let the multi arpeggiator do its trick. And as you can see, the, this little marker is going around and kind of showing where the different hits are. So even though I only entered these notes in, in Renoise, a lot of the other notes being generated are from uh, the arpeggiator. And you can see we're going again with this simple A chord. And then here for variety, there's like a G chord. And it just loops around back and forth to, um, between those patterns. So when I did that, um, I wanted to get something that was a little complimentary. So I added another arpeggiator with a different sound here that just brings in these little So at this point, when I have kind of a simple um, loop that I like, I'll go over and this is just one simple loop, but you can actually kind of start to sequence these loops into a larger song sequence. So right now we're just listening to this one, but I decided to add a layer of drums too. this extra layer of drums and then from that point I just put in a very standard almost like a hip-hop beat with another uh, VST instrument that I have this is kind of for like lo-fi um, hip-hop drum samples this is uh, called electronic sound lab drum art and it's a very simple drum processor, but it allowed me to get a nice kind of recurring kick drum and then a nice snare. Um, so you can see 
I can just kind of create a big sequence where things turn on and off. So if I take this off of its own loop, this is how it starts. We start with just the, the audio. And then when we go into the next pattern, that's when the drums start. We still don't have the snares, but then in the next pattern is where it kicks off where we have everything. and I just give it a couple patterns to just let the, the echoes kind of continue and fade out naturally. And that's it. That's the whole song. Now, this is the theme song for the Success Stories podcast, and this one's even more simple because I basically found a preset in another virtual instrument called Vital. This one is free, but the presets cost. So I think I probably, to in total, probably paid about $25 for this one. And it has these nice uh, presets here. And uh, I think we wanted the sequence one. I forget which one it was. Um, it might be point, but you know, just with one key press. <laughs> yeah, I think this is it. So, um, I just found this one that was very dramatic and this basically just with one key press is the soundtrack to the success stories podcast. <laughs> So you can see all of that, all the motion, all the all the reverb, everything is actually built into the preset. Um, so from that point, I just go here and it's like, you can see it's just like one note press. Uh, that's all it is. And then we go down through the sequence and this is still playing, but on top of it, I add some complementary notes so that there's, in addition to the C, there's an F above it and then which morphs into a G. Um, here and then back to C with low and high and that's it and then it just kind of fades out and we and we end so the whole sequence looks like this <laughs> And then we have a little time for it to just fade out naturally. And that's it. So you can see, um, I know this tool looks kind of scary, but once you kind of understand the basics of it, it's just a very simple, nice way to just uh, leverage the power that really is in the instruments themselves and not in the platform. So these are just kind of like free or inexpensive uh, virtual synthesizers that I've sort of collected over the years that, um, that, you know, I spend a lot of time playing with this stuff. So I've gotten really good at it to the point where I can, um, kind of know ahead of time what to do in the program to give me the kind of results I want. But I've been working for a long time to just try and find something that is kind of like bland and inoffensive enough to serve as background music and uh, that's harder than it sounds um, but I really love working in this program I'd be happy to share if anybody else wanted to learn more about it um, but it just goes to show you that you can make very high quality uh, music for our projects without a lot of um, overhead work so thanks for watching <laughs>